be okay. Um, so here's the plan. I wanted to talk first about who I am and hopefully be a little bit of inspiration of like how you are shaping these lives, right? A lot of the people in the room are teachers or future teachers um, and just show how teachers have kind of shaped my path and then I'll launch more into the curriculum that I want to share with you. So I was really lucky in second grade, um, I got to learn logo. Raise your hand if you've seen logo. Yeah? <laughs> Seventh grade, we had hypercard. Hypercard. Love it. And ninth grade, we had basic. Yeah, done that. Yeah. Okay, and so I was in this educational context where computer science was not optional. I didn't make any decisions. I, this is just what happened, right? I knew logo and hypercard and always building upon the skills that I had learned at the previous level. Right, so then I came to Cal as an undergraduate and I was in engineering undeclared. I was like, I have no idea what engineers do, but I like math and science, so maybe I could do something in that realm, right? And so still here, I've never taken, made a decision to take computer science. It's just always been something kind of in the background for me. As an engineering undeclared major, I tried to figure out the Venn diagram of all engineering majors and figure out what courses that meant I should take. So I took some math, and I took a programming course in MATLAB. And I was like, oh, turns out this is really easy. You know why it is easy? Because other people didn't have access to this. Right, so I was in a class where people had never programmed before. And I'm like, oh, well, yeah, I've been doing logo since I was in second grade. And I see this as hopefully a model for where we're headed in terms of California's education system, where all students will have the experiences that I got to have of computing throughout the curriculum, really building upon each other, really developing these skills, so that when you get to college, you're like, oh, people say this is hard. That, that said, it got hard later, so I um, right in here, a, a lot of you have heard this story before, but I met a woman in my physics class who was like, so Colleen, you think that you want to just be any kind of engineer. It turns out you want to be the kind of engineer I am so that we can take classes together. So Irene Jung pulled me into computer science, or into electrical engineering and computer science, um, and she was persistent enough that in 2005 I graduated in electrical engineering and computer science. Then I worked as a software engineer for a little while. Loved it, loved it. And every weekend, I was trying to find kids to teach computer science to, or outreach, or, you know, they run this great program where they bring kids and yada yada. You can picture what my weekends look like and trying to do outreach through the Girl Scouts, Girls Go Tech program, trying to teach all the time. <clears throat> and I had this realization, I was like, what if the stuff I like to do in my free time, what if that was my job? Okay, so it's crazy, right? Um, that said, I still loved computer science, I loved my jobs, I loved being a software engineer, but still I was spending all my weekends trying to find opportunities to teach. So right now, in 2007, I started in the grad program here at Berkeley, where you do a master's in a technical field. I did computer science and then work on your PhD in education. So hopefully someday I will have my grind and dance job, or something similar. <laughs> so teaching computer science at the college level. The other thing I do, though, is starting from when I was an undergrad, actually, I taught some students logo. Starting from there, I started building curriculum and techniques and tools that I used when I taught students uh, to program. So in 2008, I co-taught a summer uh, course in Scratch and Alice. So Scratch, you'll see a lot more today. Analysis is a 3D kind of programming environment. Um, and so from there, I was like, oh my gosh, we're teaching tomorrow. What are we going to do? So I developed Scratch Worksheets. That was kind of the part I owned. Scratch Worksheets to help junior high school students in the PEP program was a preparing educational preparation something, something, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, but a fabulous organization here at Berkeley working on recruiting minority students into um, engineering fields. The next summer I taught at the Academic Talent Development Program here at UC Berkeley and I taught Scratch and Logo. Um, and so we, you'll see the evolution of this. So I took this, the Scratch worksheets from the PDP class, or PEP class, and morphed them into the ATDP class. Next we, uh, Dan at a Sig Seed talked me into helping with a freshman seminar at Berkeley to try and introduce students to Scratch. Uh, computer science at the college level using Scratch as a kind of a powerful, beautiful tool, which if you haven't seen it yet, it's a powerful, beautiful tool that we'll talk more about. 
Um, and so I took the sixth grade curriculum that I developed for the Academic Talent Development Program and it morphed into the Berkeley Freshman Seminar Program. <clears throat> then the, we spent that whole, we launched a pilot, we taught 15 students, and then that whole next semester we developed curriculum, <coughs> a great big team of uh, students and Brian and Dan um, to get ready for the launch in the fall, which is taking place right now. And it, Excuse me, in the interim this past summer, I, re, I, t I took all of the stuff that we had developed at Berkeley and re-aged it down for junior high school students. So dealing with a lot of the same content, but providing you know, a different level of language kind of throughout. <clears throat> right? Like college students, you don't have to tell them what a variable is. You don't, oh, we're going to use these things called variables. So um, right now, Mr. Bruno, who I'm sorry, I had to leave is at Edna Brewer and is teaching the same curriculum morphed into PowerPoints um, and guided notes and then worksheets. And so what I can offer you, so maybe this next step is you using this curriculum, is I have both an online system of curriculum and we have the PowerPoint guided notes worksheets, if that's a better option for you. So what I want to do is introduce you to Scratch if you haven't seen it. I've been teaching Scratch for a little while and I want to, and in my PhD program, really trying to think deeply about like how students are learning this and what they're having trouble with and why they're having trouble. And so I want to give you my top 10 list essentially of teaching tips and what are the things where if you have a room full of 30 students, they're going to get stuck on. Um, and then I want to share the Scratch resources with you. Everybody has a handout hat that has my email address on it, Paul Bruno's email address, and I'll talk through more of some of the details on that later. Um, OK, so if you've never seen Scratch, this is what Scratch looks like. Kind of beautiful, but maybe also a little bit overwhelming. So we have here, we have this um, sprite. So the, all of the actions happen around telling sprites what to do. So we have a sprite that can be controlled. Um, we have a stage, which is everything that you are programming happens in that stage. So you can have multiple sprites in there. Um, in here, just like regular computer scientists write lines of code, here we create blocks of code. We call them scripts. So a script is just a set of instructions, and the set of instructions is associated with a particular sprite. So these are my instructions for my cat. It has kind of a beautiful menuing system. So on the left, I have all of the blocks that I can access. And those blocks are the individual inst instructions for the sprites. Um, and you take these and combine these to make um, scripts. And the thing that we'll talk about in Scratch, the reason why it's easier for kids to use is all of these pieces lock together. And I'll show you that. It, but the idea is that in Scratch, you can only make syntactically valid programs. Okay, The things that are not syntactically valid will literally not fit. And we have a whole host of commands. So we have the blocks tab here that has all the different menus of commands that you might use. And you'll see this snippet slide is from Paul Bruno at Edna Brewer's Guided Notes. So on a website that I'll give you access to, he has these PowerPoints as well as students' copy of this same document so that they could keep track of this lingo that they're going to be using throughout the course. Okay, so I want to talk through, start diving, that was, you're done learning Scratch. Well, maybe not yet, but the, uh, now I want to dive into the approach to learning Scratch that I take and some of the misconceptions and some of the troubles that I've run into. So we're going to zoom in on this scripts area. <clears throat> and so here's what kind of a typical puzzle piece looks like in Scratch. So this is a command where I want to play the note 60 for 0.5 beats. Okay, and you'll see it's got the little dimple on the top and the bottom. So these are, that's how those are going to fit together. Students can double click on these and it'll show it'll run and it'll play that note for them. Okay. You can then, you, um, and you can select notes. So a lot of it, it's, it feels crazy, right? It's the note 60. What's the note 60? But Scratch, even when it's 